What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 119 of Park to Prem here with the Free Lions. Yes, here we are. We're at Wembley. Double live com coming your way today. Two matches, Croatia and Russia. This head-to-head -head record really isn't looking good, is it? I, di I didn't really think Croatia would win that many games over England over the last 14 years, but apparently... They're quite good. So this is going to be tricky. We are favourites for today's game, of course. We've got this game, and then we've also got Russia. We're in the UEFA Nations League, which, if you've been living under a rock, the Nations League runs between major competitions, so between the World Cup and the Euros. It's a big league format where there's basically four leagues at different tiers, and the winners of the A tier of each group, they play against each other in a head head. It's a bit of a weird format, but trust me, it does make some sense. It's to make the friendlies more interesting, essentially. So, we've got some fairly big games today. In terms of our team, I've obviously... I've been busy, folks. We've been scouting away. This is what I currently rate as the best English squad and sunny best. Um, but yes, it, it's a good team. I have got rid of some of the older players, like Tamori. We talked about this a couple of episodes ago. That said, you can see by a few of the players highlighted here in orange, they, these are the real players up at this top bit here. So there's still a few familiar names. It'll be interesting to see how they get on. Um, and we're looking for them, I guess, to provide a bit of experience as we do bring through a fair few youngsters. Um, so yeah, should we, should we talk a little bit about the team and what's what? So in terms of goalkeepers, we've got three different choices. We've got Marcus Dewhurst, who is a very good goalkeeper. He's injury prone and doesn't love big matches though. I would say the goalkeeping position is a gap in this England squad. So we've got Marcus here, who's only got seven caps. We've then got Colin Cousins, who's a not a bad goalkeeper either. He's got 20 caps to his name. I don't feel like there's a massive amount to separate the two players. Um, for me personally, I just prefer Dewhurst's shot stopping and distribution. I feel like that's pretty useful for us. The other player we've got here is Alvin John. Now you might remember this guy. Uh, he used to play for Leighton Orient and there was a period of time where I was looking to sign him. Ultimately, he's gone on to get picked up by Manchester United. Uh, he, he is their first choice keeper right now for this season. Wasn't previously. We'll keep an eye on him. He wasn't in the team previously, uh, but Jordan Pickford recently retired. So I've brought Alvin in. And with a name like Alvin, I feel like he's just going to end up being quite good. So we've got three good goalkeepers. I wouldn't say there's a super standout one there. Maybe Alvin John over Dewhurst is a shout. You can kind of tell by the fact that there's three different goalkeepers all who have caps that this is a position that really hasn't been locked down for a very long time. At centre-back as well, we do have issues. So in terms of backup centre-backs, we've got players like Adam Buckley here who, I mean, you can look at him and the fact that he's one of the backup centre-backs kind of gives you an idea of why this is a bit of a problem area for us. He's 22 years old though with a little bit of potential. Chris Turner, another good little youngster, could possibly make his international debut in the team today. I've brought him in more to be a right-back, but you know what? Professional personality, good potential. Shame about his lack of consistency. Across the board, I would say the defence is the problem area. We've also got Liam Brennan, who can play centre-back. He actually looks really good with some nice physicals. His technicals are a little bit lacking, but starting at centre-back for us... We're going to have two names that... Well, one of which you'll be familiar with. We've got Declan Rice, and alongside him, we've got someone just as nice, Lemmer who, um, maybe I should call them Lemon Rice or something, even though it's Lemon, Lemmer, not Lemon, Lemon Rice, it's probably not going to catch on. I really like this guy, he's never played for the England team before, we have called him up, our first and only controversial call-up of this entire squad. Um, at 21 years old, he's played a lot for the under-21s, he is currently, uh, you know, playing infrequently for Arsenal, but I really, really like this guy a lot, and I feel like we need a long-term plan at centre-back, with Tamori leaving the squad, and also Rice not getting any younger, I think Lemmer could be a big part of that. Anyway, at right, center, uh, right back, we've got Alexander-Arnold, kind of familiar name. His pace is starting to fall off a little bit. Hopefully, he's going to survive as a right back until the uh, the summer of, well, 2034, where we will have a World Cup. Otherwise, he might end up in midfield. He could still be a very deep, good deep-line playmaker. At left back, we have got Ryan Fry, who, wow, I mean, look at him. Could definitely do a job further up the pitch, but for us and for England... We need him as a left back. And to be honest, as far as complete wing backs go, he's very blooming good. Definitely, in my opinion, one of the best players in this team right now. Anyway, in midfield, we've got a few real players, funnily enough. We've got Jude Bellingham, who is, of course, playing for Birmingham City in real life in this save game at 29 years old. He's playing for Real Madrid. Already, 
approaching 100 caps, which is incredible. Uh, he is going to be playing as a centre mid for us alongside Watson, who uh, plays, as you can see here, for Chelsea. Was not in the national team when I came in, uh, which I was very shocked about. He was on the kind of reserve list, you know, he wasn't in the starting 11 or the regular bench. I really like this guy. I want to see what he can do for us. I feel like as far as deep line playmakers go, he, he looks the business. Looks the business. Anyway, in the wide areas, a few more familiar faces. Jadon Sancho playing for Real Madrid. His physicals are still incredible. 155 caps for him. I don't know if he'll get to 200 under our reign, but we will do our very best. Out on the right, we've got Mason Greenwood. Um, I am lacking kind of a natural right winger of sorts. So Mason slots in. Maybe Sonny Best could come in down the line. Um, obviously, more naturally a striker. There is a part of me that wants to swap him with Ashley Walker, but Walker is more natural as a striker than uh, he is as a right attacking mid. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure things out, I feel like, as we go. But we've got Walker to play with, which I'm very excited about. Of course, one of Man City's star players. I feel like when you would, would as a kid, go around your friend's house and maybe they had the video game that you didn't have and you were able to play it, you know, every so often when you'd go and visit them. That's how I feel like coming to England and getting to use Ashley Walker. And alongside him, the first ever Town or Town player to play for England whilst playing for Town or Town, Dylan Turnbull is going to start. I know some of you are going to think this is personal bias. I actually really, really think he's very good for England. In fact, if we look at the star ratings, he's considered one of our best players. Where, where are you, Dylan? Don't let me down. Is he? Is he am I, I'm blind. But there he is, one of our best players, he, he says. Um, but we have got some really, really good attacking options. In terms of other strikers, we've got Ali Hall here, who is a very, very good centre mid. There is part of me that is actually tempted to play him at centre mid instead of Watson. But I think I think we're going to... Is it controversial for me to drop him? He is very good, isn't he? How does he, how does he compare to Bellingham? Let's have a look. Oh, Jude... Jude, right, sorry, sorry, Jude. I've had a change of heart, mate. On the bench you go. So we've got Ali Hall. We've got David Mahon, who plays for Manchester United. An incredible forward. Not quite as good as Tillen, Dylan Turnbull, though. Uh, and in terms of other attacking players, Junior Lowell is quite tasty as well. There is lots of attackers and a lot of attacking midfielders. I did think about playing our wing-back system, but to be honest, we've got so many great attackers who can also play wide attacking midfielder positions. I feel like it's time for a little bit of a throwback back to a system we're familiar with. Anyway, there's a few other players in this squad. We'll get familiar with them in due course. I feel like this is, at least right now, our best start in 11. Sonny Best is on the bench. I am going to play him in one of the two games coming up today. But anyway, let's get into this first game. I didn't want to talk for too much to start today's episode, but... I do feel like with us coming to this New England side, it's worth just introducing you to the faces that are going to make up this team. I feel like midfielder-wise, attacker-wise, we're in a great little position. Defensively, mm, it, obviously with international management, you can't go out and sign someone to solve a position. You've kind of just got to deal with it as best you can, and that's one of the reasons why I'm bringing in Lemmer now. Even if he's not playing super regularly for Arsenal, um, I want to get him accustomed to the international stage because there is going to come a time very, very soon... Well, he is going to have to play centre-back regularly for us. And, you know, I need to give him game time now and give him an international opportunity now. Anyway, we are taking on Croatia today. I love to see it. They have got Smolio in goal. They've got Mr. Desser at right back. They've got Kosic in the midfield. And they've got Cece in the midfield. I mean, look at this. It's like a little reunion. I don't know how to feel about it. Hopefully they don't score against us today. I want to win my first game as England manager. We'll see how we get on here as France have taken the lead in their game in the group. Hall, who he brought in as a late addition, plays the ball to Sancho. Can't get it in, but Fry is there and he has a ball on him. Back to Sancho. Players queuing up. Greenwood's back post. What a start. What a start. Wembley erupts. Mason Greenwood out on the right wing. You can't see it, but I'm tapping my head like I'm some kind of mastermind. I thought Fry was going to put in the ball, but he just lays it back to Jaden, who sets it up at the back post from one wing to the other. And number seven, Mason Greenwood, who we're, we're going to make him a right midfielder. I know some of you wanted to see um, Jaden Sancho play inverted wing back for us. It's not going to happen today. I'm very, very sorry. Oh, no. CC's won the balls. Hack him down. He's not our player anymore. You can injure him. I'm okay with it. He brings the ball forward a long way. Whips it in. Lemma heads it away to Tomek. Oh, my word. That was not far wider the mark, was it? I must admit, it's a little weird the way this has all worked out and the fact that our first ever game in charge of England is against Croatia, just given how many Croatian players we've had over the course of this series. And well, speaking of one of them, there is Kosic, 
who of course was signed from us to Aston Villa for £46 million. If I'm not mistaken, he's currently on loan at Bournemouth with one year left of his current contract. We might be able to get him in on a free transfer come the end of the year. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Anyway, Rice is on a booking. Please don't get suspended, Declan, because otherwise I might be in some trouble. Alexander-Arnold throws it short to Greenwood, whips it in, back post, cleared away. Watson's there, though. Kosic goes flying in with a very Kosic tackle. Ali Hall, now with Watson. Turnbull, Dylan, could you get a goal on your international debut? Hall, threads it through to Alexander-Arnold. I mean, Dylan's in the box. Dylan's in the box. Where is he? He's not there. Get it, get, give it to Dylan. That's the game plan today, boys. Fry, penalty. Change player. No, did, I didn't click change player quick enough. Maybe I can do it still here. I don't think I actually assigned penalty takers. That's that's amateur of me, right? Where are you, Dylan? I hope I hope this is going to take effect before the penalty happens. Damn it! I misclicked. Oh, it's a disaster. I mean, Dylan, where are you for the rebound, lad? Sancho. I mean, he scored it at least. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Dylan. I'm sorry. If only I'd had Sonny Best on the pitch, I could have put him on the penalty. I mean, we're two goals up. If we're three goals up at half-time, I might be tempted to bring on Sonny Best for the second half. Yes, we will make that tactical change if we get another penalty. <laughs> I want Dylan Turnbull on it, thank you very much. I do feel like Dylan Turnbull is someone who would have made his England debut ahead of this World Cup that's upcoming. The fact that we're England manager maybe speeds it up a tiny bit, but he's got 21 goals in 21 for the under-21s. That's lots of 21s when you think about it. But yeah, his goal-scoring record on the international stage at junior levels is superb. I think he probably is worth a call-up for England anyway. We'll have to see how he gets on. It's a fiercely competitive position, but he probably has got the advantage of being one of my favourites. As Greenwood cuts through, can he finish it? Hits the woodwork. I expected Dylan Turnbull to turn up for his iconic diving slide tackle with his 20 aggression there to poke the ball home. Unfortunately, it was hacked clear by Croatia and, well... It looks right now like it could be 2-0 at the break, although one last chance maybe. Ball whipped in, Dewhurst collects. He's heard the rumblings of the fact I'm not really settled on an England number one right now, and he's trying to put himself in, in my good books by making a save like that. Ball forward to Greenwood, cutting inside. What's he going to do? He hits it, oh my word, he's hit the post twice. He could have had an incredible hat trick. At the break, it's 2-0. They've not had a shot on target all game. I'm very pleased, boys. You know what? Sancho, I'm sorry, mate. You've had a great game, but sunny best. Now, I should point out that with, with the England job, I am going to take it seriously for the most part, but I do see it as an opportunity to afford ourselves a little bit of fun, just like this. So I'm going to put sunny best on um, penalties, of course. <laughs> of course I am. Um, where are you, Sonny? You're on penalties ahead of Turnbull. And also, free kicks... Three kicks, the takers. I can't be bothered to set up the set pieces. Although I probably should do it off the back of this most recent season with Towler, where it definitely made a difference. Where are you, Sonny? I'll sort out all these free kicks ahead of the next international break. Are we one baby steps at a time. We're two goals up, but we're doing fine. Right, where is Sonny Best? What number is he going to have been given for England? He's currently a free agent. This is us putting him in the shop window, everyone. Dylan Temple's not at the best of games. If it was anyone else, I'd be taking him off. But Ashley Walkie, you've not been good enough today, mate. Sunny Best is going to go up top. And you know what? We're going to bring in Karen Tal out in the wide areas. Karen Tal, you might remember. You might even recognise him from your own save games. Uh, he's one of the top goal scorers in England. He's very good in this save game. And he is a face in the game regen, which if you don't know, um, if a player has... Um, well, it's not if a player has it. Basically, there are Easter egg regens that appear in every save game. They're Sports Interactive employees, people who have won charity raffles and giveaways and stuff. Um, if you search face in the game in the search bar at the top of your game, you'll get a big list of regens who are these kind of special players that are kind of Easter egg players. Anyway, Krasanovic has made an insane run. Dewhurst, though, to the rescue, and Fry gets it away to safety. I mean, for a second... It could have been 2-1 with 10 minutes left. And then I don't want to say I'd be getting nervous, but there would be maybe questions asked of the fact that Sunny Best is on the pitch and up front. Anyway, we've dealt with the set piece. Well, that should be the end of the highlight. And as Tal wants to show us what he can do, and he doesn't. So it, it, that's the end of the highlight. Right, one last shout of demand more. We've got a set piece to defend. Dylan Turnbull and Sunny Best up top is something beautiful in my eyes. I don't know what just happened on that highlight. I think it bounced off one of our players. Maybe we can hit them on the break here. Karen Tal, where are you going, mate? 
Show us what you're made of again, but this time better. He goes back to Fry. Fry bringing it forward. And goes back to Lemmer, the youngster. Arsenal player. Big day for him. So far, he's not really put a foot wrong. Fry intercepted, though, here. Although he wins the ball. Oh, you love that, don't you? The, the battling going on from our defence. Fry bringing it forward. Go wide on the right. Greenwood on the overlap is Alexander-Arnold. Whipped in. Turnbull's there. That was the moment. That was the moment. Unfortunately, the chance is squandered. It's headed over. And time is just trickling away here. Two early goals are going to secure our win. They did not do anything all game. Ali Hall got man of the match. That looks like it was a good tactical change to bring him in for Jude Bellingham right before kickoff. Hopefully Jude doesn't hold it against us too much. And uh, well, we, now we've got a game to look forward to against Russia. Apparently we dominated, which you love to see. More of that, please. And even the Wolverhampton Wanderers boss is turning up to look at... Hmm. Yeah, that ain't happening. Let's just, let's just drink this in for a second. One cap for Turnbull. No goals, though. But t tears are being brought to my eyes. And if we just have a look at him. Sonny Best. Look at it. It's, it makes me happy. It, makes, it gives me a warm and fuzzy feeling inside. Anyway... Hopefully he can get a, a club to sign him up. We're going to jump forward to the Russia game. I'm sorry if you can hear some background noise as well. There's some kind of gardeners outside my block of flats who have decided to do some streaming right as I've hit start record. Uh, I might wait for them to calm down. Uh, and well, I'll be back. We're taking on Russia. Let's not injure Shvetsov, shall we? So, folks, we are back. It's only been a few days, but we're going to be taking on Russia. However, before we get into that... I got a really interesting news item through, and that was the fact that a future signing for Town or Town has become the youngest player ever to play in the UEFA Nations League at 16 years old, Henrik Ankerson Lange. That's probably not how you say his name. Danish player, looks really, really good with some crazy potential, and he's capped for Denmark at 16. That is really, really exciting, isn't it? Um, I do, with these episodes, want to keep the club football and international football quite separate. You might have noticed the fact that despite the fact I have played a month at Towlaw, I'm not recapping those results here in the England episode. Um, you know, I, I feel like having a, a more of a solid divide between the two is kind of useful and it keeps it easier to keep on track with things. Of course... I am open to ideas for how we can possibly tweak the format and stuff with all the international football going on, um, because I do appreciate, obviously, this is something new and different for me, and so, you know, th there's a learning period for sure. Anyway, I am going to make a couple of changes for this game. I'm going to bring in Bellingham at centre defensive mid. Um, I am also tempted to give Alvin John a run out in goal, just to see what he can do there. I feel like until we have our number one established, you know, we can afford to rotate things around. There is also part of me that wants to start Sonny Best against Russia, but that really doesn't seem like the best of ideas. Um, I might try swapping around Greenwood and Walker, actually. Greenwood did a really good job out on the right-hand side playing as an inverted winger. You can see here he's actually pretty well suited to the role, um, but I am interested to see him play as an advance forward with Walker then playing as the inverted winger, because... He probably on paper is a slightly better inverted winger than uh, Mason Greenwood is. He's just a little bit more technically gifted, a bit more um, creative, I suppose. Um, but the rest of the team are going to keep unchanged, of course, despite the fact that the UEFA Nations League is, you know, to an extent glorified friendlies. They are still semi-important games, and so with that in mind, I am, I'm not going to go too crazy experimenting and completely rotating the team between matches. Um, hopefully we can put in a good performance here. I have just noticed actually, Alexander-Arnold's um, condition isn't so good. I guess with him being a little bit older, um, the prospect of him playing multiple games in such a short period of time could cause us some issues. I do just want to make sure on Shvetsov here, um, if we just highlight him, I want tackling on easy. We're not get, we're not getting him injured. Um, you thought I was joking. No, I'm 100% serious. I do not want Shvetsov getting injured in a game that I have control of. But anyway, let's see how we get on. Away from home against Russia, they are lining up in a 4-4-2. So it's going to be the battle of the 4-4-2s. Alexander Ronald's taken a knock, and it could be a tight fire. I mean, it's a good start, isn't it? Um, I didn't really talk about the right-back options that we've got. So we've got Liam Brennan who can come in. He is a pretty well-established centre-back rather than a right-back. Um, Finn Smith, um, we didn't talk about either. He's a more experienced player, more naturally a left-back. Really, really good physicals. You know, there's definitely scope to potentially move Fry higher up the pitch and then bring in Finn Smith. I actually think the right-back I'm going to go with is going to be a debut for Chris Turner who is the 20-year-old from Tottenham, as I already said. I do feel like transitioning is quite important here. The squad it was 
kind of on the old side. And uh, in fact, when I made some early changes and did my first team meeting, the players kind of con- kind of commented on the lack of experience, saying, you know, there are some older players like Tamori who I've not included in the squad today, but. I didn't really fancy having Tamori and uh, Declan Rice both playing at centre-back against each other. Not only because Tamori's probably not as good as some of the younger players we've got, but also because they're not probably going to be ready for the World Cup. Greenwood's through. Probably has to score that, you would say. But no, for sure, there's definitely been early dilemmas. I must admit, it's been a few years since I've done international management in Football Manager. So there is, you know, some new stuff to it, the new kind of... Um, team meetings seem to have some added pizzazz and some new bits added to them as Turner on his on his debut within the first minute is on a yellow card I mean that bodes well doesn't it hopefully he can remain well behaved I don't think he came on long before the 16th minute where he got his booking Russia on the attack here Sancho does well to get a tackle in and boots it clear to Turnbull what can you do Dylan you're wearing the number 10 three lines on your shirt lays it across the wall who hits it oh my word Ali Hall I feel like he might be quite an important part of this team the, uh, the PSG player. Dylan Turnbull lays it inside to him. Quite an intelligent ball by Dylan, if we're being honest. I was half expecting him to just go for some stupid speculative long shot. But no, he lays it off to his England teammate on the first time hit. Ali Hall into that bottom corner, off his left foot. Superb little finish from him there. And uh, well, with that, we take the lead in this game. And at the moment, this is following a trend that we saw in the previous match. Whereby... That we're not having too many chances created against us. Obviously, there's still plenty of time left in this game, and it's still kind of in the balance at 1-0. But, well, maybe we can get another before half-time. As the ball's played forward to walk, who dinks it through to Greenwood, who should took this away, takes it around the keeper, and what a cool, composed finish that is. As cool as a cucumber, as they say. When they say as cool, cool, cool as a cucumber, do they mean as in because a cucumber is like cool because it's been in the fridge or like the cucumber is cool because it's got sunglasses on? I'm not sure. Anyway, Greenwood, superb little finish, tucks it away. And uh, well, with that, it's 2-0 and that should be, I don't want to say job done, but that, that gives us the breathing room to relax as Sancho dinks it in. Players queuing up, Greenwood's there, hits the woodwork, he's hit it three times in two games. Turnbull heads it, collected by the keeper. Can someone explain to Greenwood that you don't get double points for hitting the post? That isn't a thing, you know. The, there's no bonus point system in football. Find the back of the net. Shvetsov, Lemmer, their youngster, just... He's got Shvetsov in his pocket right now. I'm a little bit concerned. Given this game time for England, might result in Arsenal playing him more regularly. Walker takes it down superbly. Dylan Turnbull, first goal for England! It's in the back of the net. Dylan, welcome to the national team you are gonna be my little starlet and walker who we've swapped around with greenwood for today playing now as an inverted winger with a great little run in behind gets past the center back superb touch down on the chest opens up all the space to dylan temple and that is a really nice finish driven into the bottom corner i feel like with sunny best i'm tempted to bring him on i almost just want to make the national team uh, a quest to get Sonny Best one goal, and then once he gets his one goal, he never has to play again. Oh my word, Greenwood, what an insane run. Did he just hit the woodwork again? I don't think he did. It was actually saved. Hits it, crosses it, it's Turnbull. Oh my word, he could get a hat-trick, folks. Greenwood with an assist. We are looking very, very good here. I was I was born for this job. I was born to be England manager. Shvet who? Never heard of him. Not seen him. He's in Lemmer's back pocket. Greenwood, with the effort, gets blocked, crosses it, and then Turnbull just to tuck it away. Alexander Mukhin is not going to enjoy the banter that I am going to unleash on him when we get back to, uh, well, the Taulor Stadium. 4-0 at the break. I am very pleased. And you know what? You know, Mason, you've played great. <laughs> you've played great. You know what? I can do a bit of a shuffle here, I think. I, th I think I can shuffle this around in a way to get Sonny Best on the pitch for Sancho. Is it Sancho who I want to take off? You know what? It is. Where are you, Sonny? What, what's his best attacking role? Hmm. Doesn't exist. Right. You advance forward. He is an experienced winger, apparently. He's played one game in the last 10 years, but he's an experienced winger at 31. Can we get him a goal for England? Once he scores one, I'm done. He doesn't have to come into the team anymore. Right, Turnbull. I mean, Sonny Best is... He's, He's not really running quick, but it could be squared to him. Dylan Turnbull wants the hat-trick, though. You greedy bugger. Give it to your former teammate. 
Ashley Walker under this corner. Whips it in. Oh, the chances look like they're about to fall Turnbull's way at the moment. Turnbull, I think you need to step back here. You can get bucked for not walking away in that situation, you naughty boy. Shvetsov's through. I mean, now I'm scared. Now I'm scared. Don't let him score. And nev never in doubt. Ne never in doubt. They've only had two shots on target all game. I don't think I've done enough shouty shouty. We've not scored in six minutes. They're on the attack again, actually. Shappy. Now with Kalashnikov. I don't I don't think that was actually his name, but it was close enough. Turner heads it away to Walker. Give it to Sonny Best. Look at him. He's wearing the number 14. Get there, Sonny. Press him. Run. Run. I'm talking to him like he's like a, a, you know, a husky dog pulling a sled. Just run. Just run, damn it. And Buemo is here on this side. Oh, my word. That's a risky tackle, isn't it? Shvetsov to brag in. I mean, of course Andrei Shvetsov was involved. Who else was going to be involved? You could say Dennis is going to be bragging about that goal for years to come. Do you get it? No. Let's just skip it. Let's just move on. Move on from that. We're down to second. It's a disaster. Of course, I do think France are going to be our big rivals in this group. I, I may commentate the second game of the group stage against France. I have talked about it before. With the international football, um, I want it to come secondary to the Taulor stuff for the most part. You know, in, Unless it's a major tournament or a super important game probably not going to have its own episode um you know i oh my word mason greenwood what was that um but no i i do feel at the same time like this can be a fun let off i suppose in, in some ways i'm kind of tempted to just turn it into you know a bit of fun i guess splattered out between the super serious towel or business maybe we could do semi infrequent q and a's in international episodes as well but yeah lovely goal there it's 5-1 i mean the 4-4-2 uh, very loosely inspired from the 4-4-2 that we used to play at Taulor. Looks like it's just going to kind of deliver us the kind of goals it used to get us at Taulor as well. We were very convincing against Croatia. Turner, don't do that. You're on a yellow card, you wazzock. Shretsov heads it wide, right? Um, Turner, I know you've only just come on. I'm going to have to take you off a of Buckley, mate, because I just don't trust you. I just... I, I can't trust him, folks. He's on a yellow card. He's sliding in like a madman. There's been 40 shots in this game so far. 30 for... Did I read that? Yes. 30 for us and 10 for them. What a mad game. Neither team seems to know what defence means. Fry, where are you going, Fry? Where are you going? Lays it to Greenwood. Should score this. Does score this. Is that a hat-trick for Greenwood? It is a hat-trick for Greenwood. I mean, Turnbull, what are you doing, mate? Where's your hat-trick? How am I meant to justify continuing to play you if Mason Greenwood, who's been forced to play attacking midfielder repeatedly, is getting hat-tricks? Anyway, 6-1. What a crazy, crazy couple of games in charge. I mean, this is going to go down in the history books. Could we get England's biggest ever win? I mean, I don't want to say it's on the cards, but it could be on the cards. I actually don't know what England's record is. Fry with a great little tackle back to Alvin John. I mean, he gets a touch of the ball. Can we give him a sarcastic cheer there? It's the first time he's touched it, I feel like, that I've remembered. Anyway, Walker bringing it forward. Sonny Best is there. Sonny Be Give it to Sonny. Whipped in. Greenwood's there. Oh, you thought for a second it was destined to fall to Sonny. I have been practising my singing voice, so when he scores, you know, we will sing the song one last time for Sonny Best. I feel like in some ways this would... Once he scores for England, that's kind of the end of his story. That you know, that would be the final chapter. We could close the book then. Oh my word! I mean, Hall has just rattled the woodwork with a crazy, crazy long shot. Not really sure what possessed him to shoot from there. We've only got ten minutes left to get Sonny Best a goal. I don't want to say I'm panicking, but I am starting to worry that we might have to call him up for the next set of internationals. Walker lumps it forward to Dylan. Dylan, get your hat trick. Get it. Oh, you've missed. Mm. I mean, at this point, it's entirely his own fault, right? Like, he can't blame anyone else but himself for the fact he's not got a hat trick this game. I feel like there's still time for a few more goals. This game's had so many highlights. Every time we get the ball, I'm, I'm hoping that it's just going to fall to... um. To Turnbull uh, or, or Sonny Best. I just noticed they've got Thiago Maia playing in their team. Is that the Brazilian Thiago Maia? He used to... He, did he get signed to Lille in real life? He used to play in Brazil. There was one year where he was insane in football manager. I assume a bit like Mario Fernandes did, who you know, played right back for CSKA Moscow. 
in this save game, Thiago Myers just played for years in Russia. So he's taken up Russian nationality. Yeah, that does look like it's what happened. It's kind of interesting. He's been there long enough to pick up a nationality. And at 35 years old, he's about to play in his fourth ever national team game. I feel like if I was the Russian manager, I probably wouldn't be calling up a 34-year-old for his international debut. Anyway, it's going to finish 6-1, so there was no further goals to be had. Dylan Turnbull gets two, but unfortunately, he's a little eclipsed by uh, Mason Greenwood. Crazy, crazy average ratings across the board, and then Sonny Best with a 6.5. I mean, I will ask you guys in the comments, do we continue to try and get Sonny Best a goal? Is that is that a side quest that I have to do here as I send my assistant to a meeting um, yeah, you guys can let me know. Obviously, a bit, bit of an experiment today. I know for some of you, you're probably craving more town. All that, of course, will be coming your way tomorrow. We've got the Europa League tomorrow where, you know what? I'll give you, I'll give you, give you a little teaser because why not? If you stuck around to the end, you, you deserve a teaser as to what our Europa League group is. So our Europa League group, you can see here, is Roma, Vitesse. I've just, I've just lost it. I've just, mm, what group were we in? What group? Help me. I'm, I'm getting lost in the game, right? Where are we? We're in Group G. We've got Roma, Vitesse, and also Basel. So that's actually... I don't want to say it's a competitive group, but it's, you know, we've got a few decent teams in there. We should be making it out. I feel like Roma are going to be our big rivals. Um, but no, it, there should be some interesting games to look forward to. Obviously, with the Europa League, you can't really expect to get one of the European big boys. So uh, we'll have to see how we go, but... I'm feeling quite good about things. But anyway, that is for us to worry about tomorrow. That will be coming your way in episode 120. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Obviously, a little bit of an introduction to the England job. It's going to be a bit of fun. You know, I'm not going to take it as seriously until we get to the World Cup. Then it becomes super serious time. Um, and as I've already mentioned, you know, I don't want this to take over the towel or stuff. This will be much more infrequent from this point onwards. But obviously, with us taking charge, our first game's in charge. It's always worth just seeing how we get on, especially when there's some familiar faces on the opposition teams. But anyway, that is all from me today. Drop a like if you have enjoyed today's episode. If you've got any feedback on the international format, I would love to know it. And I will see you guys tomorrow for more Towel or Town action. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.